right now to discuss this issue with us from Athens is Lamprini Toma, journalist at the Press Project and MC at Radio Venceremos. Thank you very much for being with us, uh, dearest uh, Lamprini. Now, the world after the Islamic Revolution in Iran is not the same as before it. The awakening that came after a set of setbacks that shook the popular resolve uh, from the fall of the Mossadegh government in Tehran at the hands of the American and British intelligence to the deadlock uh, of the national project uh, after the departure of Jamal Abdel Nasser and the betrayal of Sadat is nothing but an embodiment of the anger of the peoples of this Arab and Islamic region. In what ways, uh, Lamprini, do you think that uh, the Islamic revolution resonate to the peoples of the global south of our planet who were eager to profess their identity, to restore their rights and dignity, and to grasp their role in the movement of history. Thank you for having me. The Iranian revolution is a rupture in history in more ways than other revolutions because it brings in the forefront not only the needs of the people, especially the people who survived the tyranny and brutality of colonialism. We must always remember that many peoples didn't survive but also brought religion in the equation as the main expression of the traditions of the people, the civilization of the people, in our case, the Iranian people. Religion was part of the resistance in the fight against oppression and colonialism in Latin America and in Palestine. But in Iran, it was the main power. In a world where the two superpowers at the time, USA and USSR, thought it was forever dead and gone. It was a proof that you can win with God on your side, really, especially a God of martyrdom and sacrifice. And martyrdom and sacrifice are the secret weapons of all the popular fights in all the global south. Iranian revolution embodies that in every possible way. The Iranian revolution happened in a time when most anti-colonial movements and anti-establishment movements seemed to win. And when the exploitation of the oppressed was starting to get new forms, when neo-colonialism was starting to emerge, as the answer to all the fight and the blood that we shed as people for our freedom and dignity, back from the West and the dominant East at the time. The depth of the beauty of that revolution, the fear it spread to the colonial powers and the power it gave to all of us is shown in the war that followed right away, the Iran-Iraq war and how the Iranian people managed by shedding their blood again, as usual, to win that fight too. And I dare to say every fight after that one Mm -hmm. that by itself makes it even today an inspiration for every people who continues to fight in the world. Well, Amprini, talking about the uh, lively pulse of the revolution uh, necessitates that we address internal developments that do not know any stagnation, especially in Iran, because the democratic movement is stable at every level, as we have witnessed over the past decades, and popular participation is the title of state building. This is what the leaders always uh, speak about, uh, popular participation with all its involvement of women that is uh, rarely uh, seen even in the largest democratic countries uh, uh, of this uh, world. Now, why are the surrounding countries, uh, the neighboring countries to Iran, afraid of such a, a model? Why not just embrace something similar instead of grasping to the old ways of tyranny and suppression? Uh, allow me to add two things. Iran continued to progress not only socially, economically, but also scientifically, while leaving other sanctions in that field too. Same happened with the Iranian military power. There is a little of the Cuban experience there. I think revolution teach each other, and that's a good thing. Second, the Iranian people are a lively and proud people that is not afraid to express their opinion or take the streets if needed. They are demonstrating and protesting when they see it fit because they are people of the revolution and they want their states to be more revolutionary, be better, fight the ills of all states that will surface with time. Now, in the countries where we didn't succeed to overthrow colonialism and post-colonialism, we live under the spell of the media and the elites. Thus, the old ways of colonialism are easy, they sound modern. It's easy to accept that the West is the model we shall all follow. Elites reason in the post-colonial bubble of the superiority of the Western white men and of history as something that starts when they are born. Elites that do not know what the real civilization tastes like. Mm -hmm. That is why the revolution is still something that cannot, they cannot comprehend, because it showed that time and history are totally different for the people, especially the oppressed that they have their way to remember, to, to weave it in grassroots level, let's say, to weave their, their own truth, their own civilization, in a way that it will survive every blow. And that you don't, if you don't 
respect the, the identity of the people, the people will revolt sooner or later, and they will win sooner or later their independence. Mm -hmm. We tend to forget that independence means respecting the civilization of the people and the right to change their country themselves too. Independence is not a state thing, it is a people thing. Mm -hmm. Even modernization of the nations must be done with respect to the people's identity and tradition at a given time to mature. Well, despite uh, the arrogance of the West that we keep hearing against this uh, uh, revolution, the hostile invasion against this revolution from all sides and all, in all uh, dimensions, uh, the ideological and faith background of this revolution makes it a march that knows really no obstacles because it, it's based on uh, certain religious teachings that say uh, there will always be a way to overcome hardships. What was the main drive uh, that kept this wave going, Lamprini, for 43 years of stepping into light, denouncing darkness and uh, submission to uh, either the West or the East? It is the unity that was brought to the Iranian society by those same wars and measures which were made to break it. The Persians, the Iranians, are an ancient historic people with great knowledge of their identity and their history. Wars and sanctions are fuel to the generator of the revolution, mm -hmm. are themselves generators of resistance. Furthermore, the ones governing today are the revolution generation and the first generation after that. In the case of the Iranian revolution, the West reacts generally stupidly and vindictively, I think. They cannot understand the revolution and they believe they know everything. And they are still afraid of the Iranian people. They know where the power stands there. And they have seen their embassy turned into a museum of arrogance. It's a place that I loved when I visited now, after the revolution. Mm -hmm. The West does not believe that they can be friends with the revolutionary people, the people with identity. Thus, they are not really friendly in their approach towards Iran. And there never will be uh, such an approach as long as the revolutionary spirit survives, which is something we all wish. And it has nothing to do with rights and religion, I should say that. You just have to see how friendly their approach is to Saudi Arabia to mm -hmm. understand that it's not like that the, the case is not that. It has to do with the fear of barbaric raw power when opposite to a fruitful civilization with deep roots and a revolutionary tradition. Well, it's so refreshing to hear such uh, thoughts coming out from uh, a lady who is, um, by, according to the map, a Western lady, but at heart is definitely from the Global South. I want to thank you very much from Athens, Ms. Lemprini Thoma, journalist at The Press Project and MC at Radio Venceremos. I advise people to listen to her, to read her writings. It's absolutely